my friends, my Kingdom School family, thank you so much for joining Kingdom School, Discovering the Lost Kingdom, DTLK class A and B for this week because I'm traveling. I'll be out of town, so I won't be able to teach you live. So I recorded the lesson for you. So my apologies for not being there live, but God has something so powerful in store for you. You will be blessed by this lesson because this will be the most revolutionary journey you would ever take in your spiritual life, in your walk with the Lord. I promise you, I guarantee you, your life will never be the same after this kingdom school courses because this is so revolutionary. It changed my life. This is changing thousands of people's lives around the globe. Now it's more than 30 different countries and it is spreading like a wildfire. So once you become infected by the kingdom virus, that's what I say, when the kingdom of God enters your being, it's a country, you know, it's, a, it's not an emotion, it's not a um some idea out there but it is a real thing you can experience and live in this day and age so i pray that the holy spirit will make this so real to you and your life will be transformed and you will run with this message and fulfill the kingdom assignment that the father god has for you i'm not doing this to build a ministry to build a network or to, to build something for Abraham, John. I do this for only one reason, to fulfill the assignment God has given me and also to advance God's kingdom on the earth. So let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help us understand and receive what he has in store for us, okay? Are you ready? Or if you have a pen and paper, take some notes as I always share. If you have any questions about what I teach today, please email me or send me on Messenger or WhatsApp group or somewhere. And I hope you're reading the uh, ask the reading assignment. That book, you know, people are reading it for the fifth, sixth time. I'm not exaggerating. People are reading that book for the fifth and sixth time. Each time they read, they receive something new. So just because you read it once, please don't think you know it everything or you heard it before. Please go back again and again and again until your mind is reset and reprogrammed according to God's word from religion into the kingdom of God, from Christianity into living and walking with God in a moment by moment basis. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment in time that we could come together, Father, around your table to learn of your kingdom. Lord Jesus, you are the teacher, just like you taught the, your disciples in the first century. Thank you for teaching us. Open the eyes of our understanding. Open the eyes of our spirit to see your kingdom. Father, I ask you, Father, that you will make your kingdom so real to my brothers and sisters. That it will become more real than the natural world that they are living in. That it will become more real and experiential for them, that it won't just become an idea or a concept or a bunch of principles, but it become so real to them that they will never lose sight of it, that the enemy will not steal it from them again. I bless them with your grace and with your favor. I cancel every assignments of the enemy against their life because of this word, because of the word of the kingdom they are receiving. I bless you. I thank you for this privilege and this honor and this opportunity. Thank you for giving us your kingdom. We receive it by faith and we thank you for it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us. The spirit of truth, we welcome you. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. So last week we heard that God created this earth for what? To establish his kingdom. Our God is a king. He's not just a king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus was a born king. 
and day and night he taught and preached about the kingdom. So God established, created this earth to establish his kingdom. Then he created us and entrusted us with that task. We heard that last week. And the only message the Father God authorized, entrusted Jesus to preach while he was on the earth was the gospel of the kingdom. Please don't forget that. Please don't lose that. The only message, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, okay? This is God Almighty, the King of Kings, authorized Jesus to preach his only begotten son while he was on the earth was the message of the kingdom of God. And when Jesus sent his disciples out for a practicum, what was the message he gave to them? He said, go and preach the kingdom of God. That's the only message that is authorized by Jesus Christ for his disciples, his apostles to preach and teach his pastors, whoever it is in ministry, evangelists. The only message authorized by Jesus, every other message is illegal or came up with man's ideas and inventions. Within that kingdom, you will find healing, you will find your provision, you will find peace, you will find joy, you will find righteousness. Everything you need, need ever need is included in God's kingdom. It's ever encompassing kingdom. You don't need to go after healing. You don't need to go after prosperity. You don't need to go after peace or some blessings out there. Go after the kingdom and you get everything. <laughs> that's, why, that's why Paul said in Romans chapter 14, kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the culture of the kingdom. So let me pull my PowerPoint slides here. So last week we heard that God created this earth to establish his kingdom. The only message Father God authorized Jesus to preach was the kingdom. And the only message Jesus authorized was the message of the kingdom. So today we are going to see how Jesus and the apostles carried out that mandate that was given by his father. Okay, what was the message Jesus preached from town to town, from village to village, from city to city in the nation of Israel? What was the message the apostles preached while they were sent out, even after the day of Pentecost? Did they go out with a church planting message, revival message, rapture message? What was the message the disciples were preaching while they were sent out? So we are going to start with Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our King. And the king of kings, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. The Bible says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Even though Jesus went and healed everywhere, healing was not his message. His message was the gospel of the kingdom. Why did he heal the sick? Because sickness is not part of his kingdom. Sickness and disease and every other deformity and every other uh, dysfunction comes from the kingdom of darkness. I pray that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and heal you of all your dysfunctions, deformities, and every kind of damage the enemy has caused, traumas, emotional healing in your life. Oh, every time I preach the kingdom of God, I tell you, people of God, I feel the glory of God upon me. You preach this gospel of the kingdom, you will experience the same thing that I'm preaching. Stop preaching other humanistic man invented sexes and leadership and every other thing that people have. preach the kingdom god will never let you down people of god share the kingdom of god people are ashamed about talk about the kingdom of god it became so foreign to them and when you talk to christians about kingdom nowadays they look at you like oh my goodness what happened to this guy <laughs> can you imagine that 
Christians. This is church people who grew up in church for 40, 50 years. You share with them about God's kingdom. They look at you this. You have gone off track, Abraham. You shouldn't be talking about the kingdom because it is dangerous. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? I can't believe it, but I can believe it because that is the power of demonic religious deception. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. If it was okay for Jesus to preach the gospel of the kingdom, I tell you with the boldness, it is okay for me and I'm willing to die for it. I gave my life for it, people of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel of the kingdom. If it was okay for my Lord Jesus to preach the gospel of the kingdom, it is 100% okay for me. Let the people say whatever they want. Let them mock and make fun of me. I don't care. I don't care. The only thing I care about is my Jesus and his kingdom. My Jesus want at least one nation on this planet Earth, one nation serving him. And it bring tears in my eyes. Jesus told us to pray that pray for his kingdom to come. What did Jesus told us to pray? We gave this prayer to the Catholics, the Greek Orthodox, and to the other denominational churches. We thought this is not a Pentecostal prayer, or it's not a born again prayer. Oh my God. Jesus gave this prayer to his disciples, to his apostles, his holy 12 apostles, not to the Catholic, not to the Pope, not to any uh, cardinals out there or bishops out there. He gave it to his holy apostles and he told them to pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven. You know, every time I teach this course, I cry. Every time it happens. I don't know why I cry. I, I know why I cry because when your heart become one with the heart of God, when your passion become one with the passion of Jesus Christ and your Heavenly Father, you cannot remain the same. In this manner, therefore pray. Heavenly Father, let there be more churches be planted. Give us more money. Make us all successful and make us all leaders. No. In this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, Father. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let this earth and heaven become one. Whatever is in heaven, let it manifest on the earth. And we are the conduit. We are the channels that connect between heaven and earth. We are a spirit within. We are a, we are a spirit living in a body. Our body gives us the conduit to make the spiritual natural. Make what is in the spiritual visible and the natural. That's why God gave us this body. Then he gave us a mind to connect between our spirit and our body. So what is in our spirit can transfer through the mind to our body so it can manifest on the earth. That's why he put us here. We are a unique creation. We are heaven and earth. We are the we are the point where heaven and earth touches, where God and earth touches. We are, the, we are the meeting point between the spiritual and the natural. Whatever is in the spirit needs to manifest in the natural. It needs a channel or a conduit, a body that carries a spirit that is connected to a spirit man. Oh, that is another subject. Jesus came to give us a kingdom. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Not some experience, not some aspect of the kingdom, not little 
component of the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give us the whole kingdom. And he gave us that kingdom 2,000 years ago, my dear people of God, kingdom school family. Jesus gave, the Father gave us the kingdom 2,000 years ago, not during the millennial reign, not in the new earth and new heaven. Jesus did not tell us to pray for his kingdom to come in the new earth and new heaven. Did he say that? If he didn't say that, don't add anything to God's word, you religious spirit. If God didn't add anything to his, please don't add to God's word. And don't take anything from God's word away. Please don't come up with your own religious ideas and notions. Jesus did not ask us to pray for revival to come. I'm not against revival. It's good to have some emotional experiences. He prayed for the kingdom to come. Why don't we just pray what he told us to pray? Why do we need to add? Why do we need to invent new things? Just do what he told us to do, people of God. Just do it. He said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Let's just do it. Why can't we do it what Jesus told us to do? Why do we have to invent new things or listen to somebody else or grandpa or some other preachers on television? Why can't we just do what Jesus told us to do at least now? Why can't we just do what God created us to do? That's my um, humble <laughs> request and opinion. So do, do not fear little flock. Little flock, a few people who understand, willing to receive his kingdom. Not 5,000 people, not 5 billion people may not be. Little flock, small number of people who are willing to receive his kingdom. And it is our father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Jesus told us to preach the kingdom. Like I said before, what is the message he authorized to preach? As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is near, near, not 2,000 years from now, not 5,000 years from now, not in the new earth and new heaven. The kingdom of heaven is near. If it, what does it mean near? means at hand. It means it's almost here. It's about to appear. It's like if you're in a train station or airport, you know, the the plane is at hand. That means it's almost here, not it left Japan. When the plane leaves Tokyo airport, coming, flying into Denver, when it, when it just left Tokyo, you don't say the airplane is at hand. It is maybe 3,000 miles away, 20 hours uh, away from us. We won't say it is at hand, it is near. When it's about to land, where you can see that it's the flight is coming to land, it is, you can say it is near, it is at hand, it's almost here. That's what Jesus meant by this. Not 2,000 years from now, not in the new millennium. It's almost here, guys. It is here. It is. Get excited. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, not now. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. How do you know the end is going to come? Not because another blood moon is going to appear somewhere over Israel. Or a black moon or brown moon or whatever. What is the sign of the end time? How do you know things are going to end? This age is going to end when the gospel of the kingdom let's believe what jesus said again please can we believe what jesus said <laughs> don't go after any other preachers not when the third temple is going to be built in israel do you know there's not even a single reference to the third a third temple physical temple but there is a reference to a third temple in the new testament and I wanted to read God's original design book and find that out. Where is God building his third temple in this day and age? There is not a single reference to a, a third physical temple in this entire New Testament. You will not find it. But here it is, the sign of the end. When this 
gospel of the kingdom. Why did Jesus have to specifically say this gospel of the kingdom? Because he knew as soon as he leave this planet, people are going to come up with all kinds of different gospels. Paul said that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse uh, 1 and 2. He says, if somebody else comes with a different gospel that we didn't preach, if somebody else comes with a different spirit that we did not preach, you, you will put up with it, right? That's what he told the Corinthian church. First, 2 Corinthians 11. Eleven verse four says, "For if he, for if he who comes preaches another Jesus, do you know there is another Jesus? There's so many Jesuses out there that people are preaching about, whom we have not preached. And if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. So it happened in the first century. It's nothing new happening here." People are preaching different Jesuses, different spirit other than the Holy Spirit, and there is different gospels other than what Jesus and the apostles preached. And then he says, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. So the only message that is authorized by Jesus, by heaven, to be preached is the gospel of the kingdom. Mark chapter 1 verse 14, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Like I said, if it, if it was okay for Jesus to preach the gospel of the kingdom, it should be okay for you and I. Smile, Jesus loves you. Matthew 24, 14, I just read that. Luke chapter 4 verse 43, I must preach. This is Jesus. This is Jesus' own words, okay? I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose, I have been sent. So why did the father send Jesus? What was his authorized message given to Jesus to preach? The kingdom of God. Jesus taught the kingdom after his resurrection. The Bible says Jesus was on the earth for 40 days after the resurrection. What was he doing during that 40 days? Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says, To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, even after the resurrection, Jesus had only one subject to talk about, which is the kingdom of God. And now we are going to see how and what the apostles preached during their ministry years. Did Peter go and start St. Peter's International Ministry? Or did he preach the gospel of the kingdom? What did Paul preach? What did Philip and John preach? Remember, the only message that is authorized by heaven, Jesus, the Father is the gospel of the kingdom. So these men, these apostles should obey that. There's nothing new. Okay, let's check that out. So here is Peter, the first preacher after the day of Pentecost or on the day of Pentecost. What I did not understand, to be honest with you, my people of God, that how Peter preached the kingdom message on the day of Pentecost, I did not understand. It was hidden from my eyes. Religious spirit told me Peter preached about repentance. Peter did not preach about repentance. Peter preached the gospel of the kingdom. And when the people heard it, they got convicted. They ran to Peter and asked him, brethren, what shall we do now? That's when he said, repent. I want you to go back and read Acts chapter 2 and find that out for yourself. Okay. So Peter was not sitting there on the day of Pentecost with a three-point sermon to preach. He didn't know what was going to happen, when it was going to happen, what he was going to say. When the Holy Spirit came, he stood up with the other 11 disciples and opened his mouth. Holy Spirit gave him what to speak. And he began to talk about when the people asked, what is this? Is this somebody who's, these guys are drunk or what is going on? They said, these people are not drunk. This is what 
God spoke by prophet Joel in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And he, that was the introduction of his message. Then he went into the main body of his message. Suddenly, you know what happened? Peter began to talk, preach about David. Wow. Why would Peter preach about David on the day of Pentecost? What David has to do with the inauguration of the church? They, Peter was not preaching about David and Goliath and how David killed Goliath. No, this is a totally different aspect of David's life. He began to talk about David and I will tell you why Peter preached about David because it has to do with the kingdom of God. What David has to do with the kingdom of God, I'm about to tell you, hold on, and this is going to change your life. It is going to enlighten your spirit man forever. Acts chapter 2 verse 29 and 30, men and brethren, this is Peter saying, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sown with an oath, that is the kingdom there, okay? I'm going to show to you something that you never saw before. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sown with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Wow. Peter began to preach about David and the promise God made with David and a seed that was going to be born and who is going to inherit the throne of David. Wow. What David and his throne and the seed has to do with the kingdom of God. Are you ready for this? Are you ready, people of God? Here it comes. David is the first human being on this planet Earth that I read in the Bible who received the revelation that God is a king and he has a kingdom. Samuel wrote about God being a king. But he didn't say anything about God's kingdom. But David is the first individual, first human being that is recorded in the Bible who received the revelation who God is and about his kingdom. And he began to write about it. And do you know what happened when God looked down from heaven? He saw one human being who understood who God is. And about his kingdom. And God said, that is the man after my own heart. Because God is a king. He has a kingdom. David is a king. And David had a kingdom. He became the king of Israel. And David understood who God is. And God has been trying to establish on the earth why he created the earth. And he began to write about in the Psalms. I gave you those verses last week. Please go back and reference or read your book again. It's in, it's in that book. And when God saw that, that's why God said about David, this is the man after my own heart. And we thought God said that about David because of the music he was playing or the dance he danced. Do you know how many people dance even during David days? How many people played music? Even David's days, maybe better than David did. God didn't look at those people and say, this is the man after my own heart. No. It was of the kingdom. Everything God does in relation to earth is centered around his kingdom purpose and his assignment. And because of David received this revelation, do you know what God did? Because David received the revelation of the kingdom of God. Do you know what God did with David? Because you are receiving this revelation of this kingdom. I said your life will never be the same again. Your generation after you will never be the same again. Something supernatural is going to happen to you and your children. And this is what God did to David because of the revelation he received and understood who God is about his kingdom. God said, the key of David, what is the key of David? I will come back to it. Let me, let me read this for 2 Samuel 7, 
12 and 16, God made an eternal, unconditional covenant with David and his house and his throne, about his throne and his kingdom. What did God do? Because of the revelation David received about his kingdom through the Holy Spirit, God sent a prophet to David one day and said, I am going to establish your kingdom forever and your throne is going to remain forever. Let's read that verse. Second Samuel chapter 7, 12 and 16. When your days are fulfilled, this is prophet talking to David and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed, seed, singular, okay? After you, which is the seed. That is the seed Peter was referring to on the day of Pentecost, the seed, the son of David called Christ, Emmanuel, Jesus the Christ. I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body. That's why the Bible starts, the New Testament starts, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. Did you read Matthew chapter 1? Oh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. The son of Abraham. Hmm. The son of David. Everybody says son of David. The son of Abraham. Who? Jesus Christ. And here is that prophecy God spoke. I will set up your seed after you. Who will come from your body. And I will establish his kingdom. And your house and your kingdom shall be established for 500 years or a thousand years or 2000 years or during the millennium what did he say what did the bible say your kingdom and your house your house and your kingdom shall be established for ever before you your throne shall be established for ever wow that is one of the most powerful unconditional promise God ever made with a human being on this planet earth all because of the revelation of the kingdom of God do you know what is going to happen to you when you receive this revelation of God's kingdom who God is who Jesus is and why he created the earth and why Jesus has to come and die on the cross do you know what is going to happen to you my dear kingdom school student you begin to tap into the same covenantal blessing God made with David and his household. You get the key of David to unlock the things that nobody can unlock and to close things that nobody can close. That is the key of David. I was just showing you the key of David. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, <laughs> These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. Wow. Who has the key of David? Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus Christ, God, he is God, okay? He is inheriting the key of a man and he is inheriting the throne of David, a man. How is that possible? You talk to me. You you spiritual people, you talk, about, you talk to me about this. Oh, my Lord, my God, I'm in another world right now in the spirit. He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. What is the power of the key of David? When you use that key to open something, no one can close it. And when you close something, no one can open it. May the Lord open everything the enemy has shut over your life. And may the Lord close everything the enemy has opened over you. Every curses, disease, and misfortunes. In Jesus Christ's holy name, something is happening to you right now in the spirit. This is more powerful than life classes that you're watching on this video right now. In Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22 and uh, 
chapter 22, verses 22 and 23 says, the key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder. It's talking about Jesus. So he shall open and no one shall shut and he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place. And he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. You get to tap into the covenantal blessings of David and his house. Oh my Lord, oh my God. Do you know the power of it? Do you know the privilege of it? You've been struggling to survive. You've been struggling to make a living all your life. You didn't even know the, your genealogy in the spirit. You didn't even know what you inherited in the spirit. You didn't even know whose child you were. I remember a man I met in America, he's, he went to Europe to, to look for some dead bones of some kings. And he said, oh, I, I checked my DNA and I found out I, I'm related to some dead kings in Europe 2,000 years ago. What is the benefit? He doesn't even have money to pay his own car. And he's struggling to survive. And he says, I belong to some dead king's family in Europe. <laughs> And his last name goes back to some kings in Europe. It's not about your last name, my dear child of God. Your blood goes back to a royal family of David and Jesus Christ in the, and his kingdom. You should pride about that, not about some dead kings, about some that, that existed 2,000 years ago. His bones are not even there anymore. But Jesus Christ lives there. David's throne is still alive. And active when it rules the nations of the world. And here is about David, Luke chapter 1, verse 32 to 33. So Jesus was born to inherit the throne of David. He's the seed that God prophesied. And that's how Peter preached the kingdom of God on the day of Pentecost, which I didn't know. He preached the kingdom message from a natural perspective. Why? Because his audience were Jewish people that came from every nation under heaven to Jerusalem for the feast. And, he, and the Holy Spirit gave the exact message that they need to hear because everybody was waiting for the Messiah. They knew Messiah is going to come from the lineage of David. They knew it's going to be the son of David. They knew he's going to inherit the throne of David. Because of the prophecy in the Old Testament. And when they heard what Peter preached. They ran. We want this kingdom and the seed. That God raised from the dead. The Christ. The son of David. The seed of David who inherited his throne. And 3,000 people ran. They didn't come looking to go to heaven. Message. They didn't, Peter they didn't threaten them with the hell. What did Peter preach? The gospel of the kingdom. From the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone pressing into it. Now, if I give an altar call, you will run to the altar to receive the gospel of the kingdom. How do I know that? Because that is the power of the gospel of the kingdom through the Holy Spirit. You will run now if I give an altar call. Even if there is 5,000 people, they will run. If I tell them you can tap into the covenantal blessing of David and his throne, they will run because they are tired and weary. Jesus said, come to me, all that is heavy and laboring and heavy laden. Come to me for rest. Your soul will find rest. They will come running, people of God. You just preach the gospel of the kingdom. You don't need to manipulate. You don't need to threaten everybody, everybody with the hell or entice them with the heaven one day. You're going to walk on the street of gold someday. No, they need, they need life now. They need a peace now. Not when they get to heaven. They need healing now. And he said, he will be great, talking about Jesus Christ, the son of David, and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob for how long? Forever. Beginning when? From the time he was born, from the time he inherited the throne of his father David, and of his kingdom, there will be no end, no gap, no break, no thousand years break, no 70 weeks of Dave, Daniel's break. There is no millennial break. There is no church age break. There is no end to his kingdom and his throne. From the time he was born, when the son was given, he inherited the throne of his father, David. And he is going to reign over the house of Jacob forever and ever. Everybody say forever and ever. Oh, I'm going to tell you another story about a blind man. Everybody say blind man. In Mark chapter 10, we read about a blind man called Bertimai. This Bertimai was a blind man, born blind. And he was, he was a beggar. That's how he survived. You will only beg to live only if you're blind, naturally or spiritually. This man was a beggar, born blind. He had no hope. He had no future. He had no family, maybe. Nobody wanted to talk to him. Nobody wants to be his friend. Nobody wants to help him. He was destined to be a beggar and die as a blind man. And he was sitting by the road by Jericho on day. And something happened to this blind man. As he was sitting there and begging, he heard the noise of the crowd passing him by. And he asked somebody who was who was next to him and what is this commotion what is this crowd what is happening here some kind of riot source what is going on and somebody told him do you know what he told they told him jesus of nazareth is passing by jesus of nazareth is passing by and when this blind man heard that phrase from the mouth of a human being, something exploded in his spirit man. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, something exploded in the spirit of this blind man. Do you know what this blind man did? He did not call Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Have mercy on me. Do you know what this blind man called Jesus? Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David. Everybody say this after me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Let me get a Kleenex. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. This is in Mark chapter 10, okay? Verse 46, I want you to read it when you, after this class. After this class, I encourage you to take a few minutes, pause, sit somewhere by yourself for half an hour. I encourage you, please, I recommend strongly, take half an hour after this class and go through these verses that I've spoken and go through what you heard, what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. And this man cried out that saying, son of David, have mercy on me. My question to you is, how did this blind man knew Jesus of Nazareth was the son of David? Where did he get that idea? He never read the Bible. He never went to a Sunday school. He never had the opportunity to go to the temple. They rejected him. He was an outcast because he was a blind man. But just like David received through the Holy Spirit as a shepherd boy, this blind man received a revelation the Pharisees and the theologians in the temple did not understand, did not receive. This blind man received through the Holy Spirit that this Jesus of Nazareth is the son of David to whom God promised a throne. And a kingdom that is going to last forever and forever. Do you know what this blind man did? This blind man tapped into the covenantal blessing of David at his throne. And do you know what the Bible says? Jesus stood still. 
the whole world stopped for this blind man's cry. The Bible says Jesus stood still. Why? He heard in the spirit somebody tapped into the somebody's cry, went to heaven, unlocked the key of David and it opened that and put a demand put a demand on the covenantal blessing God made with David 2,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago. And Jesus understood in the Holy Spirit. And he said, and he stood still and said, bring that blind man to me. Everybody else told this blind man to shut up. They didn't know who Jesus was. They thought, oh, it's the miracle, the revival, and the emotional, and the devil is cast out. And they didn't know who Jesus was. The Pharisees didn't know. The religious people didn't know who Jesus was. But this blind man understood. This blind man understood in his spirit man something the theologians did not understand. That the pastors of our day did, did not understand. The apostles of our day did not understand. This blind man understood it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And people told him to shut up. Jesus, no, have any time for you. You are an outcast. You are a blind man. You are a beggar. What do you know? You never read a page of the scripture in your lifetime. But in the spirit, this man was so powerful. In the spirit, his eyes were open, though naturally his eyes were closed. In the spirit, he could see things that nobody else could see that were around him. Do you see something in the spirit? Can you see something? Can you discern in your spirit, man, right now as you're hearing the gospel of the kingdom? And Jesus told the people, bring that blind man to me. And they brought this Bartimae to Jesus. You know what Jesus asked? I just, he didn't say this. I'm paraphrasing it. I just recognize in my spirit, somebody put a demand on the covenantal blessing of David. So what do you want me to do for you? That's the question Jesus asked. The first phrase, I am adding to it. Because that's what exactly happened in the spirit. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Is it not obvious, clear that this blind man is blind? He needed sight. But Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Means once you tap into the covenantal blessing, once you use the key of David and open the covenant blessing, you can receive anything you want. Whether it is healing, whether it is blessing, financial blessings, whatever you want, it is part of the kingdom covenantal blessing, people of God. Tap into it right now because that covenantal blessing is being made available to you through this class. The spirit world is open for you. Do not remain blind as those religious people. Do not fight against this. Do not argue against the gospel of the kingdom. Please don't do it. For God's sake, I ask you, please do not argue. Please do not argue about the gospel of the kingdom. Please don't. Because you bring curse upon your life. You're sabotaging your own destiny for the very purpose God put you on this planet. Please do not argue about the gospel of the kingdom. Please don't. If you hear this and don't understand it, I have no idea how to make you understand this. If you heard what you heard today and you still don't understand, I have no way of making this understandable. I am, I am clueless. And this man said, this man could have said, Lord, I want a big house. I'm a beggar. I need a house. I need a mansion. I need a donkey to travel to come and do my begging business every day. He could have asked Jesus for anything because that is part of the covenant and blessing son of David. And I wanted to go back and read in every other place where it says in the gospel that people called Jesus the son of David.
Everybody say this. I receive the gospel of the kingdom. I receive the covenantal blessing of my father David and his kingdom and his throne. Say this after me. Say it like you mean it now. Say it. I receive the key of David. I say it. That's why, that's why I said in the beginning, the first class, this entire Bible is about a king, about his kingdom, about his royal family and his plan for planet Earth. Nothing else. Nothing else. The entire Bible is about a king, about his kingdom, his royal family and his plan for planet earth where david and his good kingdom is going to be forever on the earth where is david's throne on the earth where is jesus going to reign on the earth for how long forever and when did it start when the time jesus was born here it is i say a chapter 9 verse 6 a and to 7 and to us a child is born and to us a son is given and the government shall be up on his shoulders when during the millennial reign is that what it says in the new earth and new heaven is that what it says from the time the child is born from the time the son was given of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end no gap no gap theory nothing please don't add something to God's word that he didn't say it. And God don't make God think what he should think. We are not here to give him counsel. We are here to receive his counsel. How can we offer him counsel, Lord? Well, you said that, but it's supposed to be this way. Who are you to question God and give him counsel? Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Do you know why I'm crying? Do you know what you're experiencing now? Is the zeal of God for his kingdom and for his death and for this earth that he created and gave it to us to manage, which we have been destroying it ever since he gave it to us. Mark chapter 11, verse nine and 10. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father, David, that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Have we heard that song? Lord, we lift up your name with our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord, my God. Hosanna in the highest. The kingdom of our Father, David. Father, we receive it. We happily thank you for being a Gentile giving us this opportunity and privilege, grafted us into the covenantal blessing of David and his throne. We thank you a million thanks, a billion thanks, Father. Therefore, brethren, Peter preached the kingdom. That's how Peter preached the kingdom from a historical perspective of David and his covenant that God made it. And now you know how, they, how Peter preached the kingdom message on the day of Pentecost. Please don't forget this. Please don't lose what you got today. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom everlasting kingdom okay everybody say everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ and philip the next apostle what is the message that is authorized by jesus for his apostles to preach if anybody is a true apostle if he doesn't know the kingdom message he's not a mature apostle maybe he's not a true apostle either 
Philip went to Samaria to preach. In Acts chapter 8, we're told we read, but when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. John was all about the kingdom, the beloved apostle of Jesus Christ, whom Jesus loved. That's why, that's what the Bible talks about John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. What was he preaching? Prosperity? More donkeys? How to have more donkeys? What was his message? John is the only one who talked about born again experience, that conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What was John writing about? How to have a big ministry? How to build a mega church? The kingdom of God. Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So seeing the kingdom, entering the kingdom, manifesting or inheriting kingdom, that is the third course that I teach. I would encourage you to take it. When you finish the first two, you go to the third. Don't jump into the third, okay? Some people come and go straight to the third course. Then you miss this. You need this foundation to understand that. Then you jump into the third course. Then you ask me all those questions that you should have been here in the first course to learn it. Anyway, that's another story for another day. <laughs> Revelation 1 verse 9 says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom. Why John was in the island of Patmos? Because of the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And here is my favorite verse. And here is Jesus' favorite verse. I'm just saying that, okay? If you want to make Jesus happy, read this verse to him every morning when you have coffee, okay? Revelation eleven fifteen. 15. Some people, they never even knew that such words existed in the Revelation. People think the book of Revelation is about Antichrist and uh, the mark of the beast. <laughs> Do you know the word or the phrase or the name Antichrist is not even mentioned once in the book of Revelation? Do you know how the book of Revelation starts? The first line in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Revelation of Jesus Christ. Not revelation from Jesus Christ. Revelation of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means the book of Revelation is about the revelation of Jesus Christ to John, his legal right to rule the earth and the kingdoms of this world, the resurrected Christ. So when you read the book of Revelation, if you didn't receive a revelation of Christ, you missed it. I don't know how people come up with Antichrist revelation or the revelation about the Antichrist after reading the book of Revelation, they have to be totally demon-possessed to get that idea from the book of Revelation. Revelation of Jesus Christ, that's the book of Revelation is all about, from first chapter to the last chapter. And here is the powerful words, Revelation eleven fifteen, And you may ask, what about the beast and the false prophet? Jesus is going to crush them under his feet. That's what his book of Revelation is about. <laughs> He's going to consume them by the sword of the spirit that is going to come out of his mouth. It's not about Antichrist is ruling this world. No, it is about Christ ruling this world. The book of Revelation is about. Here it says, when the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for a thousand years. No, <laughs> that's not what it says. He shall reign forever and ever. So what is going to happen to the kingdoms of this world? It's going to be burned up. It's going to be destroyed. What does the Bible say? The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. That's my 
dream. That's why I look for to see this happen, to see this manifest, my Lord, to read, to, to reign the kingdoms of this world. That's the reason your heart should beat for. Not for another material blessing that you want to manipulate God to give to you. Everything you need is part of the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Then all the things you need. You don't need to manipulate. You don't need to twist his arm to give you anything. The whole kingdom is yours. Like you just heard today. All you have to do is to become a child. A son and a daughter in his kingdom. Evidence of Paul preaching the kingdom. Here it comes guys. Are you ready for this? The apostle people respect and reverence more than Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, the apostle Paul, you know, in the church world, they respect, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, they like, they go after Paul more than they go after Jesus Christ. Paul is not greater than Jesus. Paul was a servant, a slave, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That's what he said about himself. But Another thing I didn't know, just like I didn't know how Peter preached the gospel of the kingdom, I didn't know Paul preached the kingdom. I thought Paul preached about the blood, the cross, end times, rapture, or something else. Grace, yeah. That's what people say now. Paul preached about the gospel of grace. I know there's a phrase like that in the epistle. I'm going to come and answer you that. But let's, pre let's listen to Paul, okay? Don't listen to somebody else's opinion of Paul. Let's listen to the man himself about what he preached during his three missionary journeys. According to history, according to the book of Acts, Paul had three missionary journeys, okay? I don't know how many countries he's visited. You can check it out and tell me later. But what did he preach during his missionary journey? Church planting? Prosperity? He went into the synagogue. Here it is in Ephesus. This is in Ephesus. He went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning, persuading, concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Who is this? Paul the apostle who wrote 13 books of the New Testament. He went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading, reasoning and persuading, reasoning and persuading for three months. For about what? About the kingdom of God in Ephesus. That's where we have the book of Ephes Ephesians from because he wrote that letter to the church in Ephesus. But what is the message Paul preached in Ephesus? The message of the kingdom of God. So you have to understand the kingdom message before you go and read and teach on the book of Ephesians that he wrote to the church in Ephesus. You have to know how that church was established, on what message it was established, on what gospel that Paul preached when he went to the city of Ephesus. The kingdom of God for three months, reasoning, persuading. And this is in Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. Antioch was the second largest center for Christianity or early church after Jerusalem. After Jerusalem, Antioch was the biggest center. <clears throat> so after planting all these churches, Paul went back and had an elders meeting, called all the leaders and this is what he told, actually, the disciples, the believers, Acts chapter 14, verse 22, he says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulation, wait to fly away when the rapture happens. Is that what he said? We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God now. How do you enter the kingdom after you see it? According to John 3, 3, first you see the kingdom, then you enter the kingdom. What is the process of entering the kingdom? Many tribulations. I'm going to warn you right now. Because you are taking this course and you're hearing the gospel of the kingdom, this is going to change your life around upside down. And you're, you might encounter some tribulations because of this word. The enemy is not going to be happy. 
because you are receiving the gospel of the kingdom and he might cause you to distract you to deviate you to take you back to egypt and keep you in religion but i want to tell you may the lord keep you and keep you moving forward with the gospel of the kingdom never give up never go back to egypt never go back to religion again elders meeting in ephesus another meeting in ephesus he went back to ephesus to see how the people were doing to to encourage them to train them more in acts chapter 20 verse 25 paul says indeed now i know that you all you all i think he was from texan he was a texan i know you all among whom i have gone preaching the kingdom of god what did god what did paul went around and preached the kingdom of god will see my face no more this was his farewell message to the church in ephesus he's saying i have gone among you preaching one message the message that was authorized to be preached by my lord jesus christ the message of the kingdom and you will not see my face no more i have to say goodbye to you but i hope you will remain and preach the same message that i preached to you that's what he's telling them and the last chapter of the book of Acts begins with the kingdom message where Jesus preached the kingdom for 40 days after the resurrection in Acts chapter 1 verse 3. And this is the last chapter of book of Acts chapter 28. We are going to see how it ends. So this is Paul in Rome. Okay. So when they had appointed him, Paul, a day, many came to him at his lodging. He was under house arrest. He had no freedom to go and preach as he wanted. So people came to him, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the imminent revival or the imminent end time. <laughs> testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from the law, from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. Imagine this apostle is the apostle to the gentiles okay ephesus rome corinth these were gentile towns first he started with the jewish people then he went to the gentiles and i met a pastor a mega church pastor he said the gospel of the kingdom was only meant for the jewish people in jesus's day it's not meant for the gentiles really then why did paul went about and preached the gospel of the kingdom all around the world and why did Jesus say, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, in all the nations, not just for the Jewish people, not just in Israel. The entire world needs the gospel of the kingdom. So he solemnly testified of the kingdom of God. That's the only message Paul preached, people of God. Then why did he preach about the cross? Cross is the way to God's kingdom. Blood is the way to God's kingdom to be cleansed of your sin. That's why he was teaching to the believers. I'm going to I'll show you. This is in Rome. And this is how the book of Acts end in Rome with Paul. Acts chapter 28, 30, and 31. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him. He couldn't go out and preach because he was under house arrest and he was going to be killed pretty soon, martyred, beheaded. So he stayed in, in a rented home for two years. What was he doing those two years? Everybody who came to him, he preached the kingdom of God to them and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus is the king of the kingdom. You cannot separate the king from his kingdom. People went around, missionaries went about all around the world, preached Jesus Christ. They didn't preach the kingdom. That's what happened to this modern day church, churchianity or Christianity. They, they separated Jesus from his kingdom. Anytime you read these verses, Paul will say he testified about the kingdom and of Jesus Christ. See, they both go together. The king and the kingdom needs to be presented together to the people to understand it. To experience it to benefit do not separate the king from the kingdom so he preaching the kingdom of god and teaching the things which concern the lord jesus christ who's the king of the kingdom with all confidence and no one forbidding him and that is the end 
of the book of Acts. So book of Acts began with the kingdom message. He entered with the kingdom message. Why? The entire Bible is about a king, about his kingdom and his royal family and his plan for planet Earth. Please don't forget that if you get one thing from this kingdom course, let it be that. The entire Bible is about a king, about his kingdom, about his royal family, and his plan for this planet Earth. Do you know how much you are blessed to receive this word? And I'm giving it to you for free. You are not, I'm not charging you. This book is free. This message is free. I'm spending my time sitting here in front of this camera, doing all this administrative work, registration, paying the web designer to register, and all those things, mailing out to you the books. Do you know why I do that? Because of my love for the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ. Because I know this is the only hope for mankind and the church. That's why I do this. I don't do this for an offering. I don't do this for money, for a bigger house, for a car. I don't do this for a better shirt that I can buy. I do this for the love of God's kingdom because I understood it. I received it through the Holy Spirit. It came to me through revelation, just like Paul received it. All these books came through revelation of the Holy Spirit. I didn't learn this from a Bible school. I didn't learn this from any other man. And I give it to you for free. And I hope you value it. I hope you appreciate this, what you're receiving. Because you're receiving the things that many people in the Bible waited for. Many righteous people in the Old Testament waited to hear this, what you're hearing. And to see what you're seeing, just like it says in the New Testament. And they couldn't see it. They didn't have the opportunity. But you have the opportunity to hear this gospel of the kingdom. Like any other generation before and after. So I hope you appreciate this. Value it. And you treasure it. Just like a man who found the treasure in a field. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. A man found it and went and sold all that he had. And went back and bought that field. I hope you become passionate about the kingdom of God, just like that man. I had to give up my ministry, everything I built up for Abraham John's kingdom. I had to lay them down and pick up my cross for Jesus Christ and his kingdom, just like these apostles in the early century. So now, why did Paul preach about grace and blood and the cross in the epistles? That talks about, you know, I preach the cross of Jesus Christ. What is the difference between the Gospels and the epistles? The Gospels reveal the message of the kingdom, the son of David, Jesus Christ. Okay? Gospels reveal the message of the kingdom. That's where you take the message. You don't take the message from the epistles. Epistles reveal... Epistles reveal the life in the kingdom. Why Paul wrote all these epistles to the different churches he established. The epistle of Rome, epistle to the Roman church, church in Rome, epistle to the church in Corinth, epistle to the church in Ephesus. Why do you write it? Because when people come into the kingdom, they are going to have challenges, questions, and problems, just like some of us have, right? You have questions. So they will write to Paul. Paul, we are having this issue. You know, we don't know what to do with it. How do we do this? How do we deal with it? So he will write the epistle to them, answering their questions. Okay, this is what you should do. This is what happened when Jesus died. This is what happened when Jesus died about you. This is how God has chosen you. This is what you should pray. This is what speaking in tongues means. And this is what all those things about. <laughs> That's what the epistle is about. The gospel revealed the message of the kingdom. Epistles reveal the life in the kingdom. So which one is important? Both are important. But first we should preach the message. I think I'm going to finish here. Next week when we come, we are going to go into the three eternal and foundational purposes of God. There are seven foundational purposes of God, God's eternal foundational purposes that will never change everything 
God does is based on those kingdom eternal purposes. Once you understand those seven eternal purposes of God, you understand God and you understand why he does what he does and how he does it. Do you want to know God? It is possible. There's a price to pay. You have to give up religion. You have to give up your pride and arrogance. You have to give up your self-reliance. And you have to say, Lord, I need you. Please help me. That's all it takes. I need help. <laughs> Please help me, Father. Understand your kingdom and your purpose. And it will come to you. It is coming to you. I know you prayed that prayer. That's why you are in the kingdom school now. So next week when we come back, lesson number three, the three eternal and foundational purposes of God. You have been privileged to know the eternal purposes of God. So Father, I thank you for this privilege and this honor. What a powerful, powerful lesson, Holy Spirit, that you gave us. Lord, this lesson be sealed in our heart, in our spirit, man. What we heard today, let not the enemy steal it from our heart, Father. From my brothers and sisters' hearts, let it be engraved in their heart, in their spirit forever. This gospel of the kingdom about the son of David and his throne. Receive this. Say, I receive this. I receive the gospel of the kingdom. Say that, please. I receive the key of David. I receive the covenantal blessings of David and his throne. Your life will never be the same, I promise to you. And I'm not saying that to, to entice you or something to make you feel good. No. What would I get to make you feel good? I don't need to make you feel good. My job is to give you the truth, the revelation of God's kingdom and the keys of the kingdom. And the rest, the Holy Spirit will do it. That's his job. So thank you for being part of the Kingdom School. May the Lord bless you. I can't wait to see you live next week. I want to hear about this lesson, okay? Don't forget, after watching this, please don't go about with your daily routine and then forget about by the time you come back next week. I want to hear about your feedback and comment about this lesson when I come back live for the third lesson number three next week. So please be ready, okay? I want to hear from you. We are family. You can talk to each other. You can talk to me. You can reach out to me. I'm not this religious apostle, untouchable, unapproachable. <laughs> you can reach out to me anytime from anywhere on this planet Earth. Emails, messages, messenger, WhatsApp. I want to hear from you. Please read that book, the reading assignment. Read it with prayer. Let that words come alive in your spirit, man, just like it happened to you while I was preaching and teaching. Your heart burned, right? Your spirit mind came alive. Something happened to you today. And don't lose what you got today. May the Lord preserve you and bless you. And I cancel every assignments of the enemy against your life because of this word. Every retaliation of the enemy in any way or form, I cancel it. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Tell somebody about this kingdom school and this book. Let them be blessed. You can share this lesson with other people from YouTube, Facebook. WhatsApp group, you know, share with them. Let them hear this. Let them discern it by the Holy Spirit if they are hearing the truth or not. Okay? Please do that my favor. Don't hide it. Don't keep this treasure for yourself. Share it with other people because they need it because their life depends on God's kingdom and their destiny and their future and the future of their nation depends on the gospel of the kingdom. So God bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'm praying for you every day. Pray for me also. I'm traveling to Chicago for a conference. So keep me in your prayers. I will see you next week right here. Same time, same place. Don't miss it. Please be, don't be late for the class. Okay? God bless you. Bye-bye.